Every single person that I've worked with that has pain in their body somewhere, if I can get them on a regular exercise routine, their pain gets a lot better. Is, do you Have you seen that too? Oh, 100%. I, I see that across the board when people are able to exercise consistently mm-hmm. and appropriately for their body, we see a progression in the overall health and function of their body, mm-hmm. which more times than not starts to reduce what they're subjectively experiencing as pain. Welcome to the Exercise is Health podcast, where we're talking about exercise, health, and the interconnectedness of the two. We are your hosts, Charlie and Julie, and we will be coming to you every single week from our studio, Muscle Activation Schaumburg. Hey, welcome back, everybody, to the Exercise is Health podcast. We are your hosts, Charlie and Julie, and we're coming to you from our studio, Muscle Activation Schaumburg in Schaumburg, Illinois. Now, at Muscle Activation Schaumburg, we believe your health is your most valuable asset. Your health is one of the biggest influencers of the quality and quantity of time that you have. And while there are many aspects of health, our expertise is exercise. Exercise has been proven time and again to not only improve your health, but also increase your longevity and improve your quality of life. And if you are looking for more ways to increase your longevity, improve your quality of life, and boost your health overall, then you need to check out an event that we're going to be hosting on Saturday, April 4th, 2020. Julie, tell them more about this. On Saturday, April 4th, 2020, we are having this second ever Schaumburg Health Summit. It is coming to the Fairfield Inn and Suites right here in Schaumburg. Tickets are on sale at SchaumburgHealthSummit.com. You can also find out who's going to be speaking. I think by the time this podcast releases, we should be on our way to announcing who's speaking. So that's great. Next week, we're starting to release speakers. Oh, nice. Okay, so starting next week, you can also, if you are a health-based business and you are wanting to get your your face in front of health-minded people, please check out the How to Sponsor tab. And you, I think we only have like, as of this time six or five more sponsorship spots so make sure you get on that now also we would love to see your face there we are going to be highlighting eight different keynote health professionals that are going to be talking on their expertise educating you on how to stay healthy how to live a longer life how to live a more fulfilled life so make sure you join us the sponsors are going to be giving amazing giveaways already the people that have signed up which is only out of the five we normally have about 10 they have already talked about some amazing giveaways we are just so excited about it it's going to be leveled up from next year so make sure you join us we even have a little promo video if you're like scratching your head what the heck is the schaumburg health summit make sure you check it out on schaumburghealthsummit.com we have a little video on there that is explains everything. So we'd love to see you there. You can also meet Charlie and I and uh, get your tickets. Absolutely. Now, Julie, I have a question for you. How many people do you work with right now that have like zero, zero, absolutely none, not a single orthopedic or some kind of complaint physical issue going on? Uh, none. Okay. How, How about you? W- none. Okay. None. Okay. How many have you come across when we're talking with people in public or, you know, at business events? Almost everyone. Almost. Or? Almost everyone has some, not, not almost everyone is, is issue free. Yes. Yeah, so okay. almost everyone has them. And what about in your past? How many people have you worked with in the past that like have absolutely no issues? No, none. Okay. Yeah. And see. Everyone's got something. Right. Exactly. And so with that in mind. We're talking to all you that fit into that <laughs> yes. category today, okay? Yes. If you're sitting there and you're like, I have absolutely no issues, no issues whatsoever, maybe you can hit skip, but I would say still listen to this podcast because someday the odds are more than likely you're going to have some kind of issue and you're going to want this information readily available. So what we're talking about today are those of you who have some diagnosed or undiagnosed, what we're calling an itis, okay? Some kind of like tendonitis, bursitis, plantar fasciitis, something that is an itis ending condition where you're like, yeah, when I go and I do this motion or I do this activity or I do this exercise, this thing doesn't feel that good on me. We're going to talk to you about that and what you need to keep in mind while you're exercising in order to make sure that you're able to exercise now, that you're able to exercise consistently, and that you're able to exercise for the long term. Now, this itis thingy, this itis epidemic, we could call it, meaning everyone's got an itis. 
doesn't just stop at itises because when when words don't sound good with itis then we name them syndrome <laughs> you know so it's, it's true. like charlie doesn't sound good like charlie itis he would have to be like a charlie syndrome you know <laughs> so we need to add in those syndromes that are like it band syndrome or piriformis syndrome mm-hmm. those kinds of syndromes are also if they sounded good with itises then they would be itis it's like we don't say iliotibial itis that That's would true. be very difficult to say, or piriformitis. That would also be very <laughs> difficult to say. So, anyways, Charlie, you bring up such a great point in that so many people are struggling with itises, discomforts throughout their body, diagnosed or undiagnosed. And simply, this itis idea is an inflammation of a tissue. Mm-hmm. And here's the big problem is that every single person that I've worked with that has pain in their body somewhere, if I can get them on a regular exercise routine, their pain gets a lot better. Is, do you have you seen that too? Oh, hundred percent. I I see that across the board when people are able to exercise consistently mm-hmm. and appropriately for their body, we see a progression in the overall health and function of their body, mm-hmm. which more times than not starts to reduce what they're subjectively experiencing as pain. So there's an issue though, because you might be thinking this right now, or you probably know someone that has expressed this to you and they say something like, well, actually I can't exercise because I have da 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 going on. I have plantar fasciitis going on. And you're saying like, really what you're saying is like, I can't eat because I'm hungry. You know, I just can't do it. And you're like, wait a second. In Charlie and I's brain, it's like, if you've got pain going on in your body, the number one thing you need to be doing is taking care of your muscles. You got to be doing that. You got to be taking care of your muscles with exercise, in our biased opinion, with muscle activation techniques. You need to be caring for your muscle tissues because when you have pain, when you have this itis thing going on, which is... I guess we should change this itis to not just pain anywhere, but like pain in the muscles and joints, ligaments, tendons. We're not talking about like organ pain or like, you know, something that you try to see a doctor for, but this is more like, you know, in your orthopedic system. That is telling you, hey, you're not doing a great job taking care of your orthopedic system right at this moment or right in this area. You need to do something more. You need to change something. So it is so mind blowing to us when we hear, I can't exercise because I have pain and discomfort. But what I actually think is meant by that, and I I hope what is meant by that is that I haven't figured out a way that works for me. Okay, so one of the really interesting ideas that Tom Purvis brought up to us in our resistance training specialist training, that's 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 a huge influencer on our education and on our mindset, the resistance training specialist RTS is he brought up this idea of like the flavors, the flavors. And he brought up the flavors of what was it? Spaghetti sauces. Mm -hmm. So and, and what's interesting is that, you know, when you go in the spaghetti sauce aisle, there's always like a million options of spaghetti sauce, you know, and you can get like the extra meat, the extra cheese, the with the mushrooms, with the garlic, plain, you know, the vodka sauce that has like the cream in it. So you have all these different flavors of pasta sauce. And if you're like a pasta sauce connoisseur, then you'd probably get pretty jazzed when like a new flavor came out. You know, maybe it's not even a flavor that you ever considered. Here's the thing with exercise is that a lot of people get the chocolate and vanilla flavor of exercise, right? And the chocolate being like, okay, here's exercise. If you're like hardcore athlete, going to go compete in CrossFit games, training for Olympics, da, 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 da. And a lot of people don't fit into that category. And then the other exercise category, which is vanilla, right, is the rehab exercise. And you're like, well, I'm a little above rehab. Like I can do the band things like I've already done that. So I don't fit into that category either. And usually there's no like flavors in between. The cool thing is that Charlie and I have found that there's almost a flavor for everyone. Like Charlie's a Rocky Road guy. I'm peanut butter chocolate person. You're going to be maybe, you know, the cherries with the chocolate. This is cherries do not go in dessert, by the way, for me. So here's the thing. There's a flavor of, you know, pasta sauce or ice cream or exercise that fits your body. The problem is, is that what's presented in magazines in social media on television is the chocolate and the vanilla version and that is not very many flavors so good news we're gonna try to help you 
Go to Cold Stone Creamery of Exercise and construct <laughs> your own ice cream that fits all your needs so that you can be exercising because the number one thing that will immediately help you start feeling better is if you can find a way to exercise with your itis because that will just maintenance your body so much more, support that area so much more. It won't flare up that area. It is like the best thing you can do if you have an itis. Yeah, Julie, that's a really good point because I think a lot of times when we have some kind of inflammatory thing going on within our body, we think of all the other lifestyle factors such as nutrition, such as sleep, such as stress management, being mindful, all those things. And then like you were saying, you and I think, okay, well, what about exercise? Where does exercise fit in? And you know, with chronic pain being as prevalent as it is, where one in five US adults has some kind of reported chronic pain, according to the CDC at least, then that is a tremendous number of people that have some kind of inflammatory process going on. And those are just the ones where it's gotten bad enough that they would report that they have chronic pain. And the thing about it is, like we were talking about at the very beginning, hey, if it's not happening now to you, it's likely going to happen at some point because the incidence of chronic pain goes up with age, which means the incidence of these kind of inflammatory processes within your body goes up with age unless you start doing something about it now. Okay. And so again, yeah, there's a lot of different things that you could do from nutrition to, you know, looking at your sleep to looking at how you're managing your stress. And what we want to talk with you about today is things what you should be doing with your exercise, or at least considering doing with your exercise, if you want to help to manage these conditions better. This is not like a, a an on-air prescription of, you know, what you should do if you want to reverse it or anything like that, but it's just things, variables for you to consider. So when you go to work out, it maybe gives you some better guidance on the choices that you can make during your workouts to help lead you to a favorable outcome. All right. And what does that favorable outcome look like? It looks like being able to exercise on a consistent basis with no negative repercussions. Okay. No pain, no soreness, no chronic fatigue, and being able to exercise day after day after day and continue to see your health, continue to see your strength, continue to see your function all progress in the direction that you're desiring. All right. That's a favorable outcome that we're trying to guide you towards today. All right. So number one thing that you have to keep in mind is that if you're experiencing these conditions, you have to keep moving. All right. Now you might be sitting there thinking, well, look, I heard that exercise actually creates inflammation within the body. All right. Actually, exercise stimulates a number of anti-inflammatory processes within the body to actually combat inflammation. If you go on Google Scholar or PubMed and you do a search for like exercise and anti-inflammatory properties or anti-inflammatory molecules, you'll see a number of papers showing how exercise boosts the prevalence of these anti-inflammatory molecules to help combat inflammation. But what's the caveat to that? The caveat is when exercise is being done appropriately for your body and when it's tolerable for your body. Okay. So that's really the direction that we want to head with you today is discussing, well, how do you create exercise that's appropriate and how do you create exercise that's tolerable? Because I think we know when exercise isn't appropriate and isn't tolerable for our body, or at least we know like while we're doing the exercise, if it's not tolerable or if it's not appropriate, all right, like while we're exercising, we might feel pain while we're exercising, like in the muscles themselves or where the muscles kind of are close to the joint where they might be attached to the bones. We also might feel like there's only pain in one group of muscles, even if we're trying to work a number of groups of muscles, okay? So that might be something that be that would be telling us, yeah, you know what, how we're doing this exercise is not appropriate or it's not tolerable for our body. We also might notice that there's pain like in the joints themselves. That would be an indication that how you're exercising is not appropriate or not tolerable for your body. So during the exercise, like those are, are two things to keep in mind. Also thinking about metabolically during the exercise, if you're starting to feel lightheaded or if you're starting to feel dizzy, like those are telltale signs that how you're exercising is not appropriate for your body. Also, right when you finish exercise, there are some pretty good signs that let you know that you did not do, that you were very inappropriate and you probably blew past your tolerance level. And that is changes in appetite immediately. Like if your appetite usually will tank 
if you have overdone it, meaning you're not feeling hungry. Also, if you start feeling like your body starts tightening up right away or you're really sore right away, those are signs that you've done too much. Also, within the um, kind of extended time after you exercise, like 24 to 48 hours, you might start feeling cold or flu-like symptoms. You might have pain in your joints. You might have tightness that inhibiting you from doing motions like sitting on the toilet, going up and down stairs, getting in and out of your car, things like that. So these are all really signs that your body is not tolerating your exercise. Now, I know sometimes in, in social media and in the media, you hear some of these and they say they're okay, but we're going to argue that they are not okay. And if you can exercise with our upcoming advice and also make sure that you're not experiencing any of these things, the chances of exercise starting to work in your favor and being more of your body's flavor is way higher. So we offer those as kind of flags for you to start kind of planting your in your brain if any of them pop up if you experience any of those during or after you immediately exercise, and those are signs that, hey, what you're doing was at some level inappropriate or not tolerable for your body. And so then we need to change that. That that needs to change. If you're going to be able to exercise for the long term, and especially if you have any kind of inflammatory conditions or itises going on, all right? So then the conversation now has to shift to, all right, well, how then do you exercise in a manner that's appropriate or tolerable for your body? If we know what the outcomes of inappropriate or intolerable exercise look like for your body, how do we prevent that from happening by exercising in appropriate and or tolerable manner? And okay, so we did a Two Minute Tuesdays post that came out yesterday that you're definitely going to want to reference because we give video examples of all these. But we want to kind of walk you through each of these points and go into greater detail than we did during the you know brief two-minute video that we made. But if you want to check out visuals of it, make sure to you know go to our website or go to our YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram pages and check out the Two Minute Tuesdays video that came out about this, okay? So the first thing that thinking about it when it comes to exercising appropriately is how much motion are you using, okay? How much motion are you using and how much motion do you have available for your body, all right? So thinking about those two things. One, what's available for your body? And two, what are you using relative to what's available, all right? So so like, what does this look like? Uh, yesterday, we put out the video where we we're on the leg press, all right? And Julie was on the leg press and we needed to check her hip motion, her knee motion, and her ankle motion to make sure that when she did a leg press, that the machine was not pushing her into a position that she couldn't move into, all right? And a lot of times what we see is people try to like fold themselves up as much as they possibly can and shove themselves into a position and then try to perform an exercise out of that. And when and the challenge with that is more times than not, you don't get injured or you don't your body doesn't become intolerant of exercise when you're doing things more in the mid range. It becomes intolerant when you're doing things in more extreme ranges of motion, or you're more likely to get injured when you go to more extreme ranges of motion. And so if you're finding that with your exercise, how you're doing it, you are always going to like really extreme ranges of motion. Well, first of all, we need to pause and say, okay, well, let's just even check how much motion your body is able to perform before going and doing the exercise. And then from there, then we can start to incrementally increase the amount of motion that you're using during the exercise. You know, Charlie, the point you just brought up with the amount of motion that you're using and the amount of motion you have available are, I think the probably the biggest, like biggest, if you change this, it'll make the biggest change in how you're feeling after you exercise. And if you start respecting the range of motion that your body has, the more your body is going to give you in terms of range of motion, like the biggest pushback we get from this point is like, well, I thought I was supposed to use full range of motion. 
Well, yeah, full range motion is great, but if you can't tolerate it, it's really not great. So the more that you're doing your tolerable range, the more you're checking your range of motion, the better. Now, I want to give you another example just so you have another clear picture. And again, you can refer back to our video we did yesterday. It, on the chest press, a lot of people will set up the chest press machine and then they have to kind of rotate their body to get their arms behind the handlebars. And then while they're li while they're sitting there in that rested position, their arms are back and ready to do a chest press, they feel like a stretch you know, in their pecs or in their chest muscles. Now, usually this is a sign that you are positioned way too far into what we, the motion that's called horizontal abduction, or I guess bringing your elbows back behind you into that starting chest press position. The way we recommend to check your range of motion or check your available range of motion for this exercise is to reach your arms way out front and then pull your elbows back and out to the sides and and see how far you can go without the machine imposing anything on you. When you can see that motion, that's where you should set the handlebars. The handlebars shouldn't you sh should not be shoving you further than where you can go all by yourself. So make sure that you're checking that range of motion. It's almost like if you do an air chest press, like there's front, back, front, back, so the back part, make sure that the bars are not shoving you back further than where you can get all by yourself. Now, for the second point that Charlie brought up with how much range are you using, you can also set up this machine so that you're not even close to being as far back as you possibly can. And you can kind of work the middle range, not getting close to all the way straight with your arms and not getting close to all the way bent with your arms. And this is a great place to start if you've got a shoulder issue. And then as your shoulder gets stronger, start adding more range so that you can get closer and closer to full range. And if you're having a flare up sometime, go back to that smaller range. It's a great way to continue to keep that area strong without flaring your body up. Now, the second part of this is not just how much you're moving, but how you are moving. Okay. And one of the things that we see often is people hurt themselves while they're exercising when they don't use clear stops or clear turnaround points. Okay. What does this mean? So let's go back to the chest press example that Julie was giving. A lot of times what you might see at the gym is people kind of flinging dumbbells up and then almost like dropping them and bouncing them at the bottom and then flinging dumbbells up and then coming back and bouncing them or drop, you know, dropping them and bouncing them at the bottom. Okay. And what we are recommending you do is instead of the bounce at the bottom, come to a clear stop, all right? So there's absolutely no bounce. So you are lowering the weights slow enough that when you get to the point where you want to push back, you can come to a clearly defined and complete stop and then reverse your direction and without rocket launching out of the bottom, but slowly moving out of the bottom and slowly pushing all the way forward or all the way to the top. The reason why this is important is because when thinking about what's gonna make exercise inappropriate for your body? In part, it's gonna be the wear and tear on your joints that can happen during exercise. And not just your joints, but your muscles as well. And if you are constantly kind of dropping the weight and catching it, with every rep, that's going to create a lot more wear and tear on your joints and a lot more wear and tear on your muscles, as well as passive tissues that surround the joints, such as your ligaments, to a much greater degree than if you were to slowly lower the weight down, slowly come to a complete stop, and slowly reverse out of that bottom position to push forward again. So if you want to minimize the wear and tear on your body, the wear and tear on your joints, on your muscles, and the passive tissues that surround your joints, and to if you, if you want to make sure that exercise is more appropriate for your body, incorporating these clearly defined and complete stops while you're exercising and while you're lifting weights is going to be a really big aspect of this. You know, controlling those stops, as Charlie, you were talking about, will also really, this is, in, in Charlie and I's brain, this is pretty implied, but it will really also prevent further injury and, again, those flare-ups because you remember in our first point, we kind of talked about really seeing what motion was available. A lot of times when you're moving without control, without really being mindful of those start and stops points, then you're really violating 
where your body's telling you to stop. Like if you check range of motion with no weight, no machine, no nothing, you just check your motion of, of and you kind of like do an, an air version of, of the exercise, you can find out what your range of motion is. And then when you add weight to that, you need to stay within that range of motion, whatever it is, whether it's a lot, whether it's a little, doesn't matter. What matters is that it's respectful to your motion. Now, the second how you move is going to be changing angles in your body so that there's kind of like different muscles in different areas that are that are going to be the main movers for exercise. Now, the way you can do this, you can think about different ways to angle your feet out and in, your hands out and in. So an example we gave yesterday for this would be on the leg press, you can have your feet kind of hip width apart and your toes pointed up. You can also do any variation of taking your feet further apart and angling your toes out. And we suggest play with that and see what feels good on your ankles, knees, hips, low back. Maybe you're a very kind of narrow leg presser. Maybe you're a really wide and turned out leg presser. Another one I see a lot with uh, actually my golfers is elbow issues. So I noticed that one of my golfers in particular is like, so that means I don't do anything with bicep curls. I was like, well, I don't think you want that area to get weaker. So let's play with a few things. So we played with changing, I guess we would call it pronation and supination, but that means kind of like turning your palms forward, turning your palm in. We can also change how your shoulder is doing. Are you turning your shoulder out, turning it in? So play with the angles of your body to see if you can find a way to stimulate and keep muscles healthy and strong without creating more issue at your itis area. So chronic pain is an epidemic, at least in the United States, where one in five Americans report some kind of chronic pain and that rate of report increases with age. So if you feel like it's not affecting you right now, at some point, it very well may be affecting you. And chronic pain is often a sign of inflammatory processes happening within your body, these kind of itis conditions starting to develop. So if you feel like you have diagnosed or undiagnosed kind of itis conditions going on, one of the most powerful things that you can do to help improve your health overall is making sure that you're exercising. But you need to make sure that you're exercising in an appropriate manner and in a manner that's tolerable for your body. So if you feel like you have these itis conditions, diagnosed or undiagnosed going on, making sure that you're exercising is definitely something that you should consult with your physician with, as well as strongly consider adding in to your daily and weekly routine. But how you're exercising makes all the difference. Making sure that you're exercising in an appropriate and tolerable manner for your body is what's going to allow you to keep exercising for the long term. So how do you do that? You do that by making sure that the amount of motion that you're using during the exercise does not exceed the amount of motion that you actively have at each of the joints that's involved with exercise. You do that by making sure that you're not flinging weights, that you're not dropping weights, that you are coming to clearly defined and complete stops and turnarounds while you're moving your weights, as well as by strategically changing the angles at which you're moving at. So you're changing how much you're moving and you're changing how you are moving in order to match the exercise to what your body can tolerate and to what your body can do. And that's how you exercise for the long term on a consistent basis in order to make sure that you're able to continue to reap the health benefits of exercise that come from exercising for life. So who do you know that needs to hear this episode? Who do you know that is concerned about exercising because they feel like every time they work out, their body feels worse. Share this episode with them so they can learn about some things that they can start adding into their workouts to help minimize the risk of exercise being inappropriate for their body and help make sure that exercise is more tolerable for their body. And while you're online, if you wouldn't mind, head on over to iTunes and leave us a rating and review. It helps us show up higher in those search results when people are looking for podcasts on exercise and when people are looking for podcasts on health. So if you found value in this conversation today, let us know by leaving us a rating and review. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. We always appreciate it. Have a fantastic week and we'll talk with you all next week.